percent answers to prayer guaranteed james chapter 1 verse number 5 if any of you lack wisdom let him ask of god that give it to all men liberally and upbraid it not and it shall it shall be given but let him ask in faith not in wavering for he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed next verse for let not that man think let not that man think that he shall receive he didn't say let not that man think that god will give he said that he shall receive because already james gave us certain adjectives to describe this god he called him the giving god who giveth to all men liberally so the fault is not with the giving god the fault is with the receiver and that's why he says let him ask in faith not in wavering for he that accept not in faith let not that man think that he shall receive anything from the lord so the issue has to do with receiving now i remember we've already established that we don't pray prayers of intercession because intercession is not a prayer actually for the church intercession is the office of jesus intercessory ministry is the office of jesus what is intercession it is to ask for pardon on behalf of another to ask for pardon that's intercession and that is what jesus did for us jesus did that for us so we don't pray intercessory prayer for people but we pray prayers of supplication it is because of lack of knowledge that some churches you have intercessors there's no such thing as intercessors jesus is the intercessor that is his ministry in hebrews 7 25 the scriptures clearly shows us that that is jesus's ministry wherefore he is able to save them to the uttermost that come unto god by him seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them he is the one that makes intercession for us we don't intercede for people because we are not the ones that pay the price romans 8 34 who is he that condemn it it is christ that died yea rather that is risen again who is even at the right hand of god who also make it intercession for us jesus is the intercessor and in his intercessory ministry he has already pleaded for pardon but he didn't plead for pardon for us empty-handed he pleaded for pardon for us as he himself being the ransom he didn't pay a ransom he is the ransom he is both the scapegoat and he is a sacrificial lamb and the high priest in one he is the ransom the intercessor and that is the present day ministry of jesus he obtained pardon on our behalf he obtained pardon for us as our intercessor so first timothy chapter 2 verse 1 now let's look at uh, paul speaking he said i exhort therefore that first of all supplications prayers that intercessions doesn't come in anymore because already by your understanding of intercession that is a, a translator's error it's supposed to be supplication prayers and giving of thanks be made for all men be made for all men why wouldn't there be intercession because intercession has to do with begging for pardon and there is no other pardon to beg for why is there no more pardon to beg for because second corinthians 5 19 put it up to wit that god was in christ reconciling the world unto himself not imputing their trespasses unto them and had committed unto us the word of reconciliation so god was in christ reconciling the world so if god was already in christ reconciling the world it means the intercessor has already pleaded for pardon he has already taken care of that amen i said amen so therefore he can't be asking anybody to come on behalf of others to ask for pardon because christ already did that so we're dealing with supplication and when we are talking of supplication we are talking about making a petition on behalf of another making a petition the prayer of supplication is the prayer of making petitions on behalf of another intercession deals with sin it deals with the work of the high priest that is the office of jesus so we are dealing with supplication and paul said supplication should be made for all men in timothy supplication 
prayers supplication and giving of thanks be made for all men when he said all men it includes believers it includes ministers of the gospel because all of us are part of all men be made for all men so what prayers do you pray for your pastor supplication what prayer do you pray for believers supplication we pray the prayers of supplication amen i said made for all men the prayers of supplication what is supplication it is a fixed heartfelt prayer a fixed heartfelt a prayer that you will not shift your grounds this is a fixed petition that i'm not about to negotiate my position i'm fixed in this petition it has to be done it shall be done it must be done i'm not shifting ground and i'm gonna stay on this prayer until i see it done and even when it is done i will still stay in this prayer that that which is done should be sustained it's a prayer that is prayed without end till we see jesus the prayers of supplication and that is mostly the prayers in the epistles that is mostly the prayers that paul admonished to be prayed for believers amen i said amen and in petition you are going to to god like a lawyer like a lawyer to 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 to, to prevail over an issue so you're going with strong grounds you're going with strong arguments based on the position of the scriptures you have a never giving up attitude because supplication is about controlling situations controlling situations dealing with situations supplication is dealing with situations and every day of your life you are confronted with situations that is why the prayers of supplication are a never-ending prayer because as long as we live in this earth there will be situations arising all the time so the prayers of supplication control circumstances they deal with situations they take care of situations they take care of the unforeseen and they take care of the foreseen the prayers of supplication they deal with known and unknown situations am i communicating if i'm communicating can i hear a good amen yeah the prayer of supplication and you never finish that prayer and this is one prayer where you exercise your authority one prayer actually you know uh I think it is the highest prayer where authority is exercised in the prayer of supplication. And that is why the epistles used it the most. In Ephesians 1 17, look at it, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. This is one prayer you never finish praying. Because every day as you grow in grace, you need more revelation. As you grow in knowledge, you need more wisdom. So it's an ongoing prayer. A prayer of supplication. Ephesians 3, 14. Paul praying, he says, For this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. This is an ongoing prayer. A prayer of supplication. And um, it is not the same thing with the prayer of i believe i receive it's not the same thing with the prayer of i believe i receive because in the prayer of i believe i receive i believed and i received when i prayed and i begin to give thanks and it's a once and for all prayer because the situation has been dealt with once and for all but in the prayer of supplication it is an ongoing prayer that never ends because it controls situations that arise from time to time are we together here yeah it's an ongoing prayer so these are different prayers and the rules that govern these prayers and it's important to pray aright when you are equipped with knowledge you're able to pray these prayers and see the results made manifest in your life now let's look at the most crucial for example let's get into a few practicals the most crucial thing on earth today is salvation that's the most crucial thing who will have all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth so the most crucial thing on earth today is salvation so when we want to pray for somebody to be saved how do we pray when we want to pray for somebody to be saved how do we pray 
most times our prayers are like father save him save him touch his heart touch his heart those are lame unscriptural prayers to pray for people to be saved you don't keep saying father save him touch his heart touch his heart how where is the scripture that say god will touch their heart so those are lame prayers and that's why some of us we've been praying for people to be saved and they are not saved because we are actually not praying we think we are praying but we're not praying because what we are doing when it is put together in the light of scripture is not a prayer and god's will is to see people saved and if god wants people to be saved and you pray right they will be saved so why are they not saved because you're not praying right you you ask and receive not watch this he didn't say you ask and it is not given you ask and receive not the problem is not with the giving the problem is with the receiving when you ask and miss you cannot receive because asking and miss puts you in a position where you cannot receive you ask and receive not it didn't say you ask and he gives not remember the adjectives he is the giving god that does not find fault and he gives to all men liberally so if people if people don't get saved we are not praying right and in dealing with this prayer i'm going to get it into a few practicals are you ready i said are you ready right so now so if it is me what am i going to do if i'm going to pray for somebody to get saved the first thing i want to do is i want to investigate i'm going to ask my, myself some questions why are people not saved that's the first question to ask yourself before you pray why are people not saved first question it's called intelligent reasoning why are people not saved second corinthians 4 3 tells us why they are not saved but if our gospel be hid it is hid to them that are lost so there's something that has to do with hidden gospel it is hid it is hid to them that are lost next verse in whom the god of this world had blinded the minds of them which believe not lest the light of the glorious gospel of christ who is the image of god should shine unto them so why are they not saved the gospel has been kept from them and the devil has blinded their minds so therefore they cannot see the glorious light of the gospel as long as a man cannot see the glorious light of the gospel he cannot be saved he can be in church but he is not saved and in order for a man not to see the glorious light of the gospel the enemy will make sure that the gospel is not preached and if the gospel is not preached to that man then the gospel is hid so when the gospel is hid the gospel is not preached the glorious light of the gospel cannot shine so that man remains in perpetual darkness so having said that therefore it means that the reason why people are not saved is because the gospel has been hid from them because nobody gets saved until the gospel is preached to him so that is the first reason so since we have established that by intelligence why people don't get saved then how then will they get saved second corinthians chapter 10 verse 3 for though we walk in the flesh we do not war after the flesh verse 4 for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but mighty through god to the pulling down of strongholds there are weapons we have that are not carnal and these weapons are mighty through god and the job of these weapons is to pull down strongholds and what are those strongholds verse 5 casting down imagination strongholds 
every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. What you are bringing into captivity is thought. So when we are praying for people to be saved, it's not a prayer of I pull down. I pull down strongholds. You don't pull down strongholds in prayer. You don't pull down strongholds in prayer. Because strongholds are thoughts. How do you pull down strongholds? By preaching. When I engage your thoughts with the light of the gospel. The light in the gospel will defeat the darkness in your thoughts. When that happens, you are persuaded. When you are persuaded, you get saved. So, pulling down strongholds is not a prayer. Pulling down, pulling down, pulling down is not a song. Pull down is not a song. It's not a prayer. It's warfare. Warfare is not done on your knees. Warfare is done on your foot. You don't war on your knees. You war on your foot. You go to where the man is. You engage his mind. It's called evangelism. Evangelism is warfare. It's not done in the house. It's not done in your prayer chamber. Is done by confronting the thoughts directly with the glorious light of the gospel. Because when you bring the light of the gospel, the light shines in darkness and the darkness cannot handle it. You don't sit down and be praying, Father, save him, touch him. There's no such prayer in the scriptures. We pull down strongholds. Hey, pull down all that is gymnastics it has no spiritual impetus if strongholds must be pulled down the reasoning of the man in darkness that has kept him from the gospel must be exposed to the knowledge of christ if you understand me say i hear you now follow me because i'm going somewhere into the scriptures so pulling down strongholds is not a function of prayer it's a function of of evangelism or preaching is a function of what evangelism or preaching salvation is a product of the message the message of Christ for men to be saved they must hear the message of Christ so 2nd Corinthians chapter 4 verse 3 tells us the problem why people are not saved second corinthians chapter 10 verse 3 gives us a solution to the problem why people are not saved the problem is the god of this world has blinded their minds because our gospel has been hid the solution is the weapons are not carnal therefore we must position where we can pull down the strongholds which are thoughts and imagination Let the glorious light. So if I'm going to pray for salvation, don't pray for salvation. There's no prayer like praying for salvation. It's not a prayer point. It's nothing like we're praying for the salvation of souls. That is not a prayer point. The salvation of souls is not a prayer. The salvation of souls answers to preaching. The preaching of the message of Christ is what brings salvation, not prayer. Are we in the house? Please follow me carefully because as we're praying through this year, we're going to have massive results. Because as teaching is coming, your understanding more, your prayer becomes effective. If you're with me, say, I hear you. Yeah. All right. Let me give you a few more scriptures so that we can doctrinally establish this notice paul first timothy chapter 2 verse 1 notice paul what paul said 
I exhort therefore that first of all, supplication, prayers, and giving of tongues be made for all men. He said we should pray for all men. What prayer did he say we, we should pray? That they may be saved. Okay? That we should pray that all men may be saved. How will they be saved? Verse 5. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men. The man Christ Jesus. So the mediator, the person that will ensure the salvation, is not prayer, is the man Christ Jesus. Verse 6. Who gave himself a ransom for all. That's the price for their salvation. But this is how the salvation will reach them. To be testified in due time. So if they will be saved, somebody must testify the ransom to them in due time. Somebody must take the testimony. The ransom has been paid, but somebody must take on himself the responsibility of bringing the testimony to those who are lost so their minds are engaged with the gospel so that imaginations and strongholds are brought down through the preaching somebody understand and say i hear you yeah if you understand what i'm sharing with you here we can get this whole city saved in one year this whole city of you we can get everybody saved in one year Paul conquered an entire continent in two years. Two years. The whole of Asia in two years by doing it right. He went to a place where there was a school of one Uranus where they were teaching motivational teaching and they were teaching all kinds of things. He, 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 he opened a, a small teaching class there and began to teach the word of God. And within the space of a little time so mightily grew the word and swallowed the, the, the philosophy of Uranus when the word is well preached men will come to the gospel somebody say I hear you yeah men will come to the gospel men will come to the knowledge of Christ men will be saved why are they not saved because the God of this world has blinded their minds why did he succeed in blinding their minds because our gospel is hid our gospel is hid so the god of this world has blinded their minds so they don't see the glorious light of the gospel so if we don't pray salvation then where do i direct my prayer of salvation to when we want to pray for people to be saved what should the prayer point be the prayer point should not be for them to be saved the prayer point should be for the preacher the preacher that will preach the message should receive boldness to preach because the person carrying their salvation is the preacher no matter your prayer if the preacher does not go you have shot an arrow nowhere So, instead of praying for people to be saved, pray for the preacher to go. Because once the preacher comes, he will engage them with the gospel and imaginations will be brought down and they will be saved. Am I teaching here? Yeah? Once the preacher goes, prayer for the preacher will cancel laziness. It will destroy pro procrastination because the reason why many people in church don't evangelize is laziness, distraction, procrastination and some of them are shy they cannot preach christ they lack boldness so that's why we pray for boldness when you have boldness you won't be shy you won't be timid you won't be scared you will confront anybody with the gospel when you are still feeling like supposing they ask me question i cannot answer the spirit of boldness is not on you when boldness is giving expression you are ready to take anybody on this question even if you don't know the answer, there's a way you will confront a man. Eh? You will confront him in a particular way. Without answering his question, he will be happy. Waiting for next time. When you are armed enough to come and explain. So that's why prayer, therefore, is not directed to the sinners or to the people. The Holy Ghost is doing his work on the sinners. 
You don't need to pray to remind the Holy Ghost. He is the one to convict the world of sin. And he is doing his job. But somebody must go physically to engage the thoughts and imaginations of men by shining the light of the gospel in. If you understand this, I hear you. Yeah. Friends, I'm telling you, this is very serious what we're sharing tonight. Because this is the solution to the problems of the whole world. This is what will facilitate the assignment of Christ in the earth. We pray for the preacher. Why is a man not saved? He's been blinded. Look at this rhetoric rhetoric questions by Paul in Romans 10 14 <laughs> Paul puts it very clearly here how then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed how shall they believe in him whom they have not heard and how shall they hear without a preacher number one how shall they call how if they don't know about him how shall they call on him they will not just sit on their own and say well jesus come into my heart no somebody must go to them are you in the house all right and how shall they hear without a preacher next verse how shall they preach except they be sent so all of these questions put together have their answer in the preacher that is sent if the preacher is not sent they will not hear if they do not hear they will not believe if they do not believe they will not call so everything boils down to the preacher so instead of praying for them you pray for the preacher all of these questions will be answered by who the preacher for them to hear the preacher must preach for them to believe the preacher must preach for them to call on the name of the lord to be saved the preacher must preach so no matter your prayer, if there's no preacher to preach, you only wasted your time. So instead of wasting your time praying prayers and just wasting, occupying the time with nothing, concentrate your prayer on the preacher. Because once the preacher preaches, they will be saved. It's called intelligent praying. What is it called? Intelligent praying. Look at, look at the next verse. Give me verse, verse 16. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah said, Lord, who had believed our report? Then Paul answered Isaiah. Paul said, Isaiah, it is not your report that will save them. Isaiah, your report doesn't have what it takes to save anybody. <laughs> Paul answered Isaiah. Because Isaiah was being said, who has believed our report? Paul now said, Isaiah your report cannot save anybody because if your report can save people under the old testament will have been saved isaiah you don't have a report that can save anybody so now paul says isaiah let me tell you what will save them it's not your report next verse so then paul is answering isaiah faith by hearing and hearing by the word of god or by the message of christ isaiah leave your report it cannot save a fly what saves men is the hearing of the message of christ so if they will be saved what must happen the preacher must go and preach what the message of christ when they hear what will happen they will be saved because that stronghold that kept them in darkness will be uprooted by the preaching of the message of christ then the glorious light of the gospel will shine in their hearts 
Am I teaching here? Am I teaching here? Yeah? When I pray for people to get saved, I don't waste my time praying, Oh, Father, let their heart be touched. If it's like Oluma Rock, let the hammer of the word of God break it to pieces. You are acting a Hollywood movie. Prayer is simple. Holy Ghost. That man that is supposed to minister to that woman in Madagascar. Right now, I ask that you will release him to go there. Holy Spirit, tear him up. Create circumstances that will engage him with that woman. Now, when I pray that prayer, the man that is carrying the message that will save that woman, somehow, somehow, situations will be arranged by my supplication to engage him and that woman. And what will happen? He will preach. And what will happen? The Holy Ghost that is convicting the woman will help her to see the light through the preacher. And what is the result? She's saved. The problem is not with people getting saved. It's with the people hearing what will save them. How many of you have discovered that when you share with some people in the message, they tell you, is it simple like that? Have you discovered? Ah, this you're talking, is it correct? Uh, okay, give me Bible verse because you don't want to be misled. It sounds too good to be true. Is that true? Now that tells you how much people don't know the message. It shows you how much our message has been hid. It shows you how much people are wallowing in darkness. And it shows you the need why we need to go out and share the good news with them. Because if we don't, our gospel is hid. It's hid. That's why evangelism is the un, one of the unfinished work of Christ. There is the finished work of Christ. There is the ongoing work of Christ. And there is the unfinished work of Christ. One of the unfinished work of Christ is evangelism. He didn't finish that one on the cross. In fact, after all, when he rose, that's the first thing he said. Now you go into all the world and do what? That's unfinished. You finish it for me. I have finished the other one. You, my church, help me finish the rest. Evangelism is the unfinished work of Christ left for the church to finish. Another unfinished work of Christ left for the church is prayer. You can't say, I'm not going to pray. Jesus did it all. Uh -uh. You have to pray. You have to pray. Why? Praying with all perseverance. Why must you pray? Prayer is the medium of exercising your authority on the earth. And prayer is the process of controlling circumstances. So men ought always to pray and not to faint. That means there is something about prayer that gingers your spiritual strength. So Paul answered Isaiah, faith by hearing. Faith is by hearing. It's not comet. That word comet is not in the original Greek. Faith by hearing. What kind of hearing? Hearing the message of Christ. It's not faith coming by hearing and hearing. Eh. Faith is by hearing. What should they hear for faith? The message of Christ. So when you hear the message of Christ, you have a hard faith. In Romans, Paul says, He that worketh miracles among you, doeth he them by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? So faith is by hearing. Hearing what? The message of Christ. When a man hears the message of Christ, he has come to faith. He has come to faith. And listen carefully. He has not come to progressive faith. He has come to finished faith. I'm teaching here. He has come to what? Finish faith. Because he has come to Christ. And Christ is faith. And Christ is the author and the finisher. So what faith is in Christ? Finished faith. So I'm praying for people to be saved, which is very crucial. The most important thing in the scriptures, salvation. That's why I started from there. What do we pray? We pray for the person that will preach the gospel. We pray for the person that will preach the gospel. 
question can the preacher be hindered huh can the preacher be hindered huh huh yes the preacher can be hindered have you read where paul said i desire to come to you but satan hindered me have you read that this is apostle paul the father of new testament revelation yet he was hindered so a preacher can be hindered a preacher can what how how do preachers get hindered circumstances circumstances <laughs> circumstances can stop a preacher yeah i was going to ghana to preach my own meeting and it's a one day meeting and the meeting was timed seven to nine so we bought a ticket to fly to ghana with 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 eric and it was their evening flight five o'clock because we were getting to ghana five o'clock okay if you leave nigeria five you'll be in ghana by five because nigeria is one hour ahead of ghana so i have calculated we leave five we land five i get to the hotel i refresh and i'm at the conference venue at seven two hours perfect timing we go to lagos and we're waiting for Arik for two good hours at five o'clock no announcement five thirty no announcement for boarding six o'clock no announcement for boarding circumstances want to hinder me now publicity has gone everywhere everything has been set for the conference and it's a one day conference it's not a type you say well if i don't arrive tonight somebody will speak and tell them i'm coming tomorrow it's a tight program so therefore i gotta go while i am sitting down from five when eric did not announce the flight i began to pray in the spirit i began to control circumstances in the spirit and began to seek for wisdom in the spirit mashoka koroto kebado kabada i'm sitting there i'm blasting in tongues and as i'm blasting in tongues i'm listening in my inner man for direction then at six on the dot pastor philemon and i says to pastor philemon because we're traveling together go now to eric and tell them to tell us nothing but the truth are they flying or not that they shouldn't play with our intelligence because we will turn this airport upside down they will know that men of god too can make trouble seriously i told him go and don't smile go and look like a very serious man he said okay sir he went to eric while he's talking to eric and they're saying we shall fly but we don't know what time but we shall fly we shall fly he heard arrow announcing arrow for accra boarding now he ran to me and said arrow is boarding i said go to the manager now tell him i am in this airport and i must fly with that arrow they have announced boarding he went to the airport manager but because of prayer prayer has organized circumstances the airport manager said do you have the money for the ticket he now comes to me that is another problem because i have changed my money to dollars and you don't buy nigerian ticket with dollars when do we go to change dollars another circumstance another circumstance so now the airport manager is ready to wait for me to buy the ticket and he's ready to get me on that aircraft even though they had closed boarding long ago but favor has opened that channel so now i go in tongues again for another few seconds because we have a dollar situation now we have to go out and look for people to change the dollars and all that is delay and they've already announced boarding so what do i do because this is bigger than my knowledge i have to depend on the the supply of the spirit the mystery i feel like i'm talking to somebody so i'm blasting in tongues and walking around then the holy ghost told me to ransack my bag i didn't put money in the bag to my knowledge but the the holy ghost said ransack so as i ransack my my traveling box in one corner i met an envelope i pulled the envelope out exactly the amount for the ticket i gave to pastor philemon he pays for the ticket they gave me boarding pass i'm sitting in the aircraft 6 15 exactly the plane took off we landed in accra i mean 6 15 quickly we got to the place and i preached that program now if not for supplication and the help of the holy spirit 
I would have missed that program. Because we have finished the program when Eric arrived. But the, the good thing is, the program, what was important in the program was me. Satan could have hindered me. But when you begin to pray in the spirit, you outsmart the wiles of the devil. You overtake situations and arrange situations. So no matter how tight the situation, somehow, somehow, you will wriggle your way out. Because a man of the spirit cannot be stopped. He's like the wind. You hear the sound, but you can't tell where he's coming. Oh, I feel like I'm preaching. I prophesy over somebody, you are unstoppable. Your destiny is unstoppable. Your career is unstoppable. Your life is unstoppable. Somebody shout, I receive grace to fulfill God's purpose for my life. I didn't hear your amen. I mean, I could have been hindered. I could have been hindered and it would have been nobody's problem. It's not my fault. It's not their fault. But I couldn't make it. Because I have my boarding pass. I have my ticket. And the plane came. But it came when it was not needed. So you won't blame me. You won't blame them. Circumstances. So now even the circumstances. That will have brought shortage. In the spirit. I arrested it. How many of you understand? That's why it says. He that prays in the spirit. Speaks not to men. But unto God. He is speaking what? Mysteries. You can't beat the place of prayer. No, 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 no. Especially when you know how to pray the prayers. There are also some times where you may not be able to foresee. To be able to arrest situations. So to avoid such, such, such accidental situations. That is why you pray always. Because when you pray always, prayer will go ahead 20 years, 30 years, down the road and begin to control situations that you're not aware of. So now, by the time you arrive, you find out that your life is just working well. People wonder, are you different? No, no, it's not that I'm different. I have taken care of situations years before I got there. Prayers are stored. People that have lives that are full of disadvantages and that they are full of misfortunes are people who didn't devote time to pray and control the future. They allow the future to come on them by surprise. That's why if you're not a part of the prayer going on, I don't know what you're doing with yourself because there is, there is no way you can beat a man that is consistently praying. Especially praying the spirit. The things happening with me today are things that prayer had taken care of years before now. The prayers you are praying now will take care of the next 20, 25 years, 15 years, 10 years. They will be there waiting. So things will just be happening and happening and happening. And people will be wondering what? No, no. There was a time when a people came together and took charge of the future in the present and stored up prayers ahead of time to take care of situations. So things are happening. The man is not scratched. Why? Prayers have been sent ahead of time to take care of situations. Am I talking to somebody here? Why is it that there were prophecies before Jesus came? Why didn't Jesus just appear? Why were there prophecies for 4,000 years of prophecy before finally he appeared? That is why within 33 years that he shook the world till tomorrow it cannot recover. The impact is unbelievable because when you pray ahead of time, you store up prayers that will produce unending results. Say, I hear you. Yeah. Parents that pray for their children, no matter how wild the children go, in a short while they come back and they behave for the rest of their life. Because after a while, the prayer will get on the children and begin to control circumstances that will make life, life, life uncomfortable for the children to live a particular kind of life. How many of you understand what I'm talking about? Listen, let me give you another illustration. A particular family in this city, years ago, had a daughter that got to America and got lost. The parents said for years, we can count eight, nine years. The, our daughter has not called her. We, we don't know where to find her. She's been missing, but we know she's alive, but we don't know where she is. The mother was crying. So when you hear that, there's no English prayer that can fathom that. 
See, that's why if you're not baptized with the Holy Spirit here or on television, you need to talk to us after the service because you don't know what you're doing. You're cheating yourself. So I grabbed the hands of the father and the mother and I went in tongues. Hey, I, 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 I went in the spirit for a while. Then the Holy Ghost gave me an understanding of what to pray in English. So I grabbed the hands of the father and the mother and I said to the mother, where is the room of your daughter? She took me to the room where the daughter used to stay. I said, let's stay here and pray for her. I told the mother to kneel down. I prayed and I told the mother to repeat after me. I led the mother to Christ on behalf of the daughter. Then I now said, in the name of Jesus, whoever has been anointed to minister to this lady and get her saved, I release you now. And I command circumstances and situations to make life unbearable for her. Let her only remember that the place of solace is home. Two days after, two days, it didn't take one week, Two days after, she called her mother back in Uyo and said, Mommy, I'm frustrated. I want to come home. Where are you? Where are you? She said, I just woke up from, from, from beside the road. I got drunk last night. I got drunk last night. And the person I was moving with brought me out of the car and dropped me by the road. I just recovered now. I want to come home. The mother said, give us an address. She said, I don't have money to come. Say, just give us an address. We, we, we get a ticket for you. They got her a ticket. In less than one week, she was in Akwaibo. After nine years of being lost, two days after prayer of supplication, she was in Uyo physically. They brought her to, from airport to my house. I led her to Christ. So I was praying for somebody that would lead her. I didn't know I was the one. Most times when you are praying for God to say laborers, you are the laborer. I'm teaching here. How shall they hear without a preacher? Somebody says supplication. Yeah. Listen, I prophesy over you tonight by the power of the Holy Spirit. Your life will be a life of unhindered prayers. You will enjoy breakthroughs unending. Yes. If your amen is louder, receive it right now. Yes. In Matthew 9 37, look at the way Jesus put it here. Then saith he unto his disciples, The harvest truly is plenteous, but the laborers are few. So, what did he say? Since the harvest is plenty and the laborers are few, verse 38. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that he will send what? fought laborers into he didn't say pray for the harvest the prayer jesus asked to be prayed is for the preacher the laborers to go the harvest is ripe souls are ready everywhere it's only somebody that will bring the gospel that is cast pray ye the lord of the harvest that he will steer up laborers because the solution to a massive harvest is laborers. It's laborers. It's laborers. If the people are not emboldened to labor, no, even if you pray for the next 10 years, souls will not be saved. But even if you don't pray for souls to be saved, and everybody here mobilizes and we hit the streets with the gospel, souls will be saved. Because the price for their salvation has been paid there's no reason why they should not be saved but the only reason why they cannot be saved is when there is no preacher to bring the gospel i'm teaching here and when you preach the gospel to them they will not be saved till they hear it so there are some people you are talking to they are not hearing you you tell you go and come back tomorrow i'm not ready now then you now get angry and say you don't know the other time somebody said till tomorrow he died that night you may die no don't be judgmental if they say they are not ready give them space you yourself it was not the first day you heard that you got saved don't be in a hurry you are not john the you are not john the baptist neither you elijah if the man say i'm not ready tell him okay no problem go back it means the holy ghost is still working he's still working 
And sometimes they say, when you approach people with the gospel, they may not accept at that time, but you have sown a seed. And the Holy Ghost will take those words you spoke and begin to run them around their spirit, their minds, until eventually, because of what you said, they see the need to get saved. Is that true? So that you preach and somebody didn't follow you to church it doesn't mean you wasted your time. You planted seeds. And those seeds are incorruptible seed. The seeds are incorruptible. Am I teaching? Please, if you understand me, shout, I hear you. Nobody can be saved without a preacher. Anywhere in the world. Nobody can be saved. If there's no preacher, there will be no salvation. So instead of prayer for the people, our focus of prayer should be for the men that will preach. Those men that will preach. We don't pull down strongholds by prayer. We pull down strongholds by preaching. By preaching. Amen. We pray for more laborers. When we pray for more laborers, what God does is he forces them out. How does God force them out? Not by overruling their will, but by creating circumstances that will make them preach. In Acts chapter 8, put it up. Acts chapter 8, verse 1. Let me show you something. And Saul was consenting unto his death, and at that time there was a great persecution against the church, which was at Jerusalem, and they were all scattered abroad. Persecution, since they didn't go for evangelism, they were comfortably enjoying revelation and enjoying plenty of revelation without evangelizing the lost so persecution began to build up momentum against what they were preaching because bible says satan will cause persecution to arise for the world's sake so since they were getting plenty of word and they refused to be on the offensive because when you are getting plenty of revelation, you have to be on the offensive. What is the offensive? Preaching. Evangelizing. But instead of being on the offensive, they were collecting revelation and sitting on the defensive. So Satan came up against the church with persecution and scattered them. Scattered them. Scattered them. And since they were now scattered, they were scattered abroad throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria except the apostles were not scattered because the apostles were doing their job like, like now I am doing my job so if there is going to be a scattering I won't be part of it because I am doing my job if you are not evangelizing you are not doing your job and you are provoking Satan to scatter because you can't be sitting there and be chopping revelation in the midst of an unbelieving community where everybody else is an unbeliever minus you. And then you think those unbelievers will not be instigated by Satan to fight you. So if we want to stop persecution and stop unbelievers from fighting us, we have to win them in to be part of this great army. When more of us are in the light than those in darkness, we subdue the city. I don't know if I'm teaching here. Let me tell you, kidnappers, arm robbers, sorcerers, diviners will multiply in a society where there is no evangelism and they will torment believers. They will torment the church. Because if we don't win them to Christ, Satan will use them. To break Satan's activity in a city, get more people born again the kingdom of satan is not in the atmosphere the kingdom of satan is in the hearts of men so if we want to push satan out of aquaibom out of nigeria out of any nation to push satan out the more people we bring to the glorious light of the gospel the more the devil loses ground because once somebody is born again the kingdom of satan is removed and the kingdom of god's dear son is planted am i teaching here anytime you hear there is armed robbery operation all over town it wakes you up to see why evangelism is needed in that town 
when you have too much armed robbery, kidnapping, unrest in a city, you hear of disasters and all kinds of human wickedness carried out in a city, know that the church in that city has slept from evangelism. So because the church is not multiplying kingdom citizens, Satan is seizing their hearts and planting in their imaginations all manner of evil to be carried out in that society. And it's not prayer that stops Satan. It is collecting the hearts of men from Satan and planting the kingdom of God in it. The more people get saved, the safer for the society, the better for the city. In your family, if you are the only believer and everybody is, a, is, is an unbeliever, you are the only Christian in the midst of 15 unbelievers, you will suffer. You will suffer. They will torment you. Even if they love you as blood brothers, Satan will enter their heart and turn their blood against you in that same family. So for you to be safe in your family, when you see the light, bring them to the light because if more of you are in the light those in darkness in that family will not be able to overcome you in fact it will be easier for you to win them over that's why god wants you and your household to be saved am i touching this thing very well are you catching the revelation you are an office where you're the only believer all, everybody else in that office from your boss to those under you they are all unbelievers and they see you every time you are praying and reading bible they will torture you in that office they will give you all manner of names then when it is time for them to dupe the office because you are a believer you cannot join and because you didn't join you become their enemy and because you became their enemy they look forward to eliminate you so you don't expose them so you endanger your job when the people in your office are not saved I'm teaching here. If you're hearing, say I hear you. Because some of you think you are safe in that your office. You are safe just being there as the only believer. You don't care. No need for evangelism. I mean, they, they, will, they will sack you. They will team up and sack you. Yes, they will frame you up, sack you because you are a hindrance to their operation. I'm talking here. Can I hear a good amen? That's why believers are persecuted. That's why Christians are tormented in different places. Because there are more unbelievers who have given their hearts for Satan to use as a throne. So what do you do? When you get into a place, the first operation is to get them saved. Because that's the will of God for men. How do you get them saved? The gospel. Bring the glorious gospel. When they see that light of the gospel, they come to salvation. Two things will happen. If you don't want them to persecute you and you are the only light, you either win them to Christ or they win you or they sack you. Two will happen. Are you with me here? If you resist them and they team up to sack you, you have to tell them, no, 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 no. It's not like that now. Who don't like money? Are they interested? We will share and keep quiet. You have joined them and you can never preach to them. Did you hear that? You have joined them and you can never preach to them. Never. Your light has quenched in that office. Your light can never shine. And the day they now get saved through another means, they will say you are a bad Christian. They will say in fact your Christianity is not correct. Because if you know what they have now known, you will have convinced them. I don't know if I'm talking to somebody here. So that's why if you are really saved and in an office, you will now make that office your pulpit. One by one, you take them out. Take them out positively. Not take them out as take them out. You take them out as take them out. Out of darkness. <laughs> why are you quiet tonight? It's a major, it's a major issue. Eh? It's a very serious issue. This is a serious issue. Who will have all men to be saved? Amen. Praise God. Are you blessed tonight? Yeah. God wants to have all men to be saved. So that is why an understanding of what we are teaching now gets you 
out there where the sinners are with the message of Christ. Let me ask all of you a question. Is this good news? The message of Christ, is it good news? Now let me ask you another question. Have you ever seen anybody that doesn't like good news? Have you ever seen anybody that doesn't like good news? Even a bad person wants good news. Even a wicked person likes good news. Have you ever seen a very bad, rotten, unbelieving man who is sleeping around everywhere with everything that is in skirt? When he wants to marry, he says, I want a very clean Christian girl. <laughs> very clean Christian girl. Well raised at home. A virgin. He himself is a dustbin. <laughs> but he wants a clean Christian girl. You see a prostitute that is professionally prostituting. When I want to marry, I need a decent man. There is nobody that doesn't like good news. <laughs> That's the point I'm making. Everybody likes good things. Even if the man is a bad, bad, bad man, he wants a good thing. The message of Christ is good news. I'm not ashamed of the gospel for the gospel is the power of god unto salvation hallelujah i command the giant on your inside to come alive i command the anointing on your inside to come alive i command the zeal of god to consume you i command passion for souls to overshadow you i command the appetite to evangelize to overshadow you i command the zeal of soul winning to overshadow you somebody say in the name of jesus i declare I am a laborer with the message of Christ for the dying world. I didn't hear a powerful amen. amen. When you see a ministry or a church doing well, it is because the, the church devotes time to pray for the pastor. Anywhere you want to see revival, if you want to see a revival in a city, the people to pray for are the men of God. Because a revival cannot come to a city except by the men of God in that city. God will not use anybody else. The people God will use are the doorkeepers, the key leaders. They are the ones that will bring the revival. So instead of praying, Father, revive the city. That's a wasted prayer. Target the men in that city. Call them by name. And ask that the Holy Ghost will flow through them and bring a revival. Am I teaching here? Yes. You want a family to experience the blessing. Don't pray for the family. Pray for the family head. Pray for the head of that family. If the head of that family is impacted from him, it will affect everybody. Are you with me here? Are you with me here? Yeah. That's why when you get one, when you get one enlightened, influential man saved, you have gotten an entire constituency. But if you get one, now that's not to say souls are not important, but I'm still dealing with influence and relevance. If you get one poor, nobody born again. He has no influence over anybody. So sometimes when it comes to intelligent praying on certain subjects, you have to, you can't pray for everybody. So you look for the point man that if something hit him, it will affect the rest. Am I teaching here? Simon, Simon. Satan has desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for you. When you are restored, you strengthen your... I didn't pray for your brethren. Because your brethren are under your influence. So when you are restored, take care of your brethren. So my prayer is not for all. Instead of dividing all that prayer energy, I concentrate it on you. Because to get you is to get them. Strike the shepherd. And the sheep will scatter. So instead of praying for the sheep, you pray for the shepherd. Because as long as the shepherd is intact, nobody can touch the sheep. It's called intelligent pray. Thank you, Lord. Acts chapter 4, verse 29. Notice their prayer, Lord, behold their threatenings and grant unto thy servants that with all boldness they may speak thy word. Okay? 
Next verse. By stretching forth thy hand to heal, and that signs and wonders may be done by the name of thy holy child Jesus. Next place. And when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And they speak the word of God with what? Boldness. They speak the word of God with boldness. With boldness. They didn't preach with fear anymore. They preach with boldness in the midst of persecution. In the midst of evil reports against a ministry. The prayer is the prayer of boldness. When there's an opposition against a ministry and people begin to wag their mouths against that ministry, the prayer is that the leader of that ministry should have boldness so that in spite and irrespective of what is going on, he is preaching the word with boldness because what prevails over all the persecution is the preaching of the word. Pray for the man. Pray for the man of God. Paul said, pray for us. Pray for us. That the word of God may have free course with us. Pray for us. Pray for us. Amen. Pray for the ministers. Pray for the ministers. Colossians 4.2. Just to buttress that fact. Continue in prayer. And watch in the same with thanksgiving. Continue. That has to do with supplicate, supplicate, supplicate. The move of God is the move of men. If you want to see a move of God, pray for men to be moved. When men move, God moves. The move of God is the move of men. Did I say something? The move of God is the move of men. Because man decides the activity on the earth. Man. God say, let them have dominion so if god must do anything on the earth he must find a man if god cannot find a man he can do nothing watch when he tried to save the world through men and no man on earth was sinless no man was sinless he didn't save man as god because god needs man so since he couldn't find man god became man moved among men to save man because god can do nothing without man i'm teaching here yeah for god to do anything on this earth a man must be available and for satan to carry out any activity on the earth a man must be available so man is a vital factor in the move of god and in the opposition of darkness when you hear that satan has hindered the man of god it is men that are used that Arik flight that was delayed was a man that delayed it. A man delayed that flight. Maybe in the morning when they were to take off the first flight, a pilot was not there on time. And from there, the schedule began to shift because of a man's error. Also, it is possible that the weather was not good. So Satan interfered with the elements in the weather. To delay the schedule that affected the overall movement of that plane so it is both men and circumstances how do you deal with circumstances you pray what about men you also pray when you pray god knows how to persuade men through your prayer to cooperate at a particular point to let things happen did i say something are you blessed tonight yeah, you pray for us. That we be not hindered. Paul said, pray that we be delivered from wicked and unreasonable men. There are some people in this city, when they hear my name, their blood boils. Me and them have never met. We have never quarreled. I have never taken anything from them. In fact, if they see me physically, they may not recognize me but when they hear my name in their body their blood begins to boil why wicked and unreasonable men for all men have no faith so what do you do you pray for me that i be delivered so when you begin to pray for me when they are setting traps because of your prayer if your prayer cannot stop their traps your prayer will control my direction 
So if your prayer tries to stop their traps and their other man, since their will cannot be influenced, your prayer will bounce back on me. And because I am born of the spirit and your prayer is a prayer of the spirit, your prayer will come on me. And instead of going like this, I wouldn't know why I went like this, but I just escaped a trap, which if there was no prayer, I will have landed in the trap. So that is why you pray for us that we be delivered from wicked and unreasonable men not wicked and unreasonable devils wicked and unreasonable because wickedness is in the heart of man satan only influences it wickedness is of man it's not of satan evil satan fears man this satan that you think is too much is afraid of man because evil satan can do nothing without a man watch this if god can do nothing without a man how much less satan you don't know what you carry. You don't know what power is available to you. You don't know what power is available to you. The power of man. Man is powerful. Man is powerful. Did you hear what I said? Man is what? A ruler can suddenly come into a nation and declare church is demolished. And they demolish churches and nobody can do anything about it. And the churches will pray for him to die. The more they pray, the healthier he gets. Man man is powerful so that's why when you deal with men in authority you need wisdom you need wisdom because they can take you out they can take you out and nobody will ask a question you need wisdom haven't you read where herod took john the baptist out have you not read he took john the baptist out john the baptist challenged herod herod says Sai! You challenge me. He put his name with Red Byro. Then the girl came and danced for him. He said, Sai, this girl, the way you are dancing this Awilo, this Etigi is rebranded. What can I do for you? She said, Wonderful. Let me talk to my mother. The mother said, Ahead of John the Baptist. That's what we want. He came and said, Oga, I want the head of John the Baptist in a man. Ah! John, you don't get that. Now John the Baptist said, oh, take him out. They took the head. He said, according to your request, the head of a prophet, see as they're using it as puff puff, according to your request. Because nobody prayed for John the Baptist. Then the thing sweet them. They now took James. Sugar. They took James. Before you could say Jack Robinson, they have cut off James. The thing is sweeting them now. They took Peter. When they took Peter, the church said, now we know. The church went to prayer. Egabon Shaka. Prayer was made without season. As the church woke up to pray, Aya, angel entered there and said, Peter, Peter, come out. They, they can't kill you. The supernatural went into operation. When the church prays, Satan is reduced to a non-entity. Stand on your feet tonight. Men ought always to pray and not to faint. When you hear people running me down as your pastor, that is time to pray. That is your time to pray. That's not time for you to start checking whether what they are saying is correct. Say, I just have something about Papa. Let's observe. It, it looks like... No, to do that, you have become a partner with them in the destruction of God's assignment. That is time for you to pray that God will frustrate their tokens. That their arrangement will be disappointed. Am, am I talking to somebody here? That their tongue will lose relevance. That their words will be inoperative. That their strategy will disappoint them. That is when to begin to pray that God will turn their counsel to foolishness. That's not a time for you to be checking. What are you checking? Are you the registrar of heaven? Who are you to judge another man's servant? If he fall, he falls to the one that called him. And the one that called him is able to make him stand. Leave him alone. That's what the scriptures is talking about. That doesn't mean a man of God should misbehave. But at the same time, it is not your responsibility to check your man of God. Your responsibility is to be fed by him and to protect him in the place of prayer. Somebody say, I hear you. Paul said, pray for us. Pray for us. Instead of praying for us, church people will come to us to pray for them. Say, Papa, pray for me. It's not in the scriptures. The scripture didn't say, Papa, pray for me. It said, you pray for Papa. You shouldn't be coming to me for prayer. You should pray for me. When you pray for me, 
in the course of my preaching i will solve your problem you are the one to pray for me that when i claim this altar i will have undeniable utterance so you will find out that when i start preaching i will be entering places and solving problems because you have conditioned my message in prayer with solutions i feel like i'm talking to somebody you are the one to pray for because what i'm carrying is all of you you are the one to pray for me not me praying for you so even after service i have already prayed be blessed go and excel that door they close as you're living here now it has opened instead of you to concentrate on that operation of the spirit in your mind i will see papa after service my own is vip prayer v v i p prayer i need a personalized prayer he talked about healing and he called headache and, and, and neck pain but he didn't talk about waist problem so i have to see him let him touch the waist another person will say i have to see him he didn't talk about knee problem he has to touch my knee after the service now you wear me out because when you should have received healing from the waist and knee even without calling it because no word of god shall be void of power so what are we to see papa for nothing only money bring money to me papa take money for crusade that tv broadcast i'm paying for one month and that's what to see papa for because after i have labored here you should bring the fruit to my office What of if we need counseling? If you hear my preaching well, you wouldn't need counseling. Because my preaching is counseling. It's the whole counsel of God. And I'm preaching under the spirit of counsel. I'm teaching here. I'm teaching here. I declare over this house by the power of God by the grace of Jesus Christ the sufficiency of this grace everything outstanding in your life is supplied right now every need is met desires are granted every sickness is healed yokes are destroyed captivity is taken captive I prophesy over you any circumstance that will have brought shame to you I command that circumstance to be destroyed I deliver you from shame I deliver you from disgrace I deliver you from stagnation I deliver you from stagnation I deliver you from stagnation I deliver you from attacks wherever they gather to make life from their able I decree they will not see you ah, you are covered in this pavilion you are hid in Christ you are in Christ in Christ there is no shame in Christ there are no tears in Christ there is no disgrace from this night because you are in Christ you will never see shame you will never see disgrace all those that are waiting to see your downfall they'll be disappointed receive deliverance receive deliverance receive deliverance ah, they shall surely gather but you are delivered from their trap you are blessed with the blessing you are highly favored you are lifted hey i prophesy today what labor could not give you grace has put it in your hands 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 lift your two hands for 30 seconds blast in tongues just release prayer to control situations for 30 seconds everybody karana korado hey shakorada bosata labaha pray 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 Bokotoka, Kokolobo, Hegebago, Karanago, Halaboja. Ogorobo Sekelene Mohosa. Engrana go 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 sugala na maho. Egarato, Egarada gaba shokara na maha. Hey, shokoro do gaba satalaba. Pray in the Holy Ghost. 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 Thank you, my father. In the mighty name of Jesus. If you believe it is done, let that amen come like thunder. 
I decree that tonight, the remaining days of this week will be days of testimonies. Yes. Testimonies. Yes. Situations that looked totally impossible. As I'm speaking now, they have become possible. Yes. Cheaply possible. Yes. Things that look very, very difficult to get. As I'm speaking now, they have become easy for you. Yes. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it.